that is so thick. It doesn't pour so much as stack. <laughs> it's a mix between salsa and pizza sauce. Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary. Isn't that a thing? Yeah. You say mm -hmm. that in a mirror and then she mirror. comes and cuts your throat. How do they explain all the times it doesn't happen in that in that urban myth? I don't know. It doesn't happen. Yeah, it never does. A lot of people do make a Bloody Mary from a Bloody Mary mix. I personally haven't really done anything with Bloody Mary mixes on the show. It does seem sort of antithetical to our thesis here on how to drink, but I thought it might be fun to look at all these Bloody Mary mixes and see if any of them really compare favorably to a homemade, from scratch, you know, how to drink Bloody Mary. And honestly, I think some of them probably will. So let's find out. The first thing I wanted to do is kind of create a baseline. What is my own recipe from an episode of How to Drink from 10,000 years ago? It's a short one. If you want to take a break, go check it out. It's up here in the corner. It's down in the pink comment, I'm sure. So we're going to start with a little lemon juice. These are lemons that I cut last night for an episode I was shooting last night. They're still lemons. It's fine. I think a half an ounce is going to be fine here. I might, you know, modify this a little bit. A Bloody Mary, Meredith, it's not rocket science. You can tweak it, you know? I personally prefer a really understated garnish. Just like, just a little just the sprig of celery a lot of people like those i don't know if that's still the thing but for a while it was a thing to like cover your bloody mary and everything right? yeah, like put a hamburger in it yeah i remember that yeah yeah exactly we're gonna do uh, a bit of worcestershire and i'm gonna use a bar spoon because i know this bottle likes to pour fast i've been told that's actually pronounced washer sister i like horseradish somebody said like horseradish in a bloody mary I think horseradish defines a Bloody Mary. It is the crux of the, the, the thing. Half a bar spoon. Obviously, this is all to taste. All right, so a little uh, horseradish in there. We're going to hit it with a little bit of Tabasco. Not huge on Tabasco, but a little bit won't hurt. Two dashes as if it were bitters. Curiato wanted me to try out this uh, white label vodka from the Community Spirit Company. Uh, thank you, Curiata, by the way. Curiata is a great place to get your spirits uh, if you're ordering online. Or if you want to get spirits delivered to your house, Curiata is the place to do it. Partner of the show. Love it. You know, supporting them is supporting us. There's a link up here. There's a link down there. We love Curiata. But I do want to make sure, since I've never had this vodka, that it is just like normal vodka and not like some kind of a... Yeah, it's really neutral. Wow. Two ounces of vodka. We need to get four ounces of tomato juice, and here it is, Campbell's. And I honestly, I actually have no garnishes prepared for this episode. We screwed up. We didn't get the celery. Ugh. I got to tell you, the celery, love it. Not going to make or break any of these. It'll be fine. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of this uh, coarse salt, a little pinch of that, a little black pepper. Might even put a little more on that of that on top when we're all done here. I like black pepper. Get my ice cube. We can't shake this. If we shake it too much, it'll freeze. What you might want to do, though, when you roll a drink is put a, a strainer that'll fit down the throat of your tin or whatever it is that you're working and hold the ice back so that you can roll the drink while the ice stays put. And if you really want to get big rolls, not that I'm great at this at all, you start close and you walk away. And then before you run to the end of your liquid, you want to shut it off because that's when it starts to dribble. And I'm telling you right now, it's getting frosty just from this. We're going to kind of uh, try to get some of this ice in here. Put my drink in. Garnish it. And this will be my uh, baseline Bloody Mary against which others will be judged. Why is that not good? I like a bit more Worcestershire than what I got last pour. Now we're talking. That's perfect, right? It's got a little heat. You got the tomato. It's got the tanginess of the Worcestershire. You know why this is tasting off? Because I know for the, like in my brain, I didn't put any Tabasco in the last one. The Tabasco is throwing me off a little bit here. I don't mind the Tabasco in it. Frankly, I would leave it. I, if you had a smoked Chipotle Tabasco, which is a wonderful thing that they make, I might toss a little of that in there. Black pepper, salt, all wonderful things in this drink. And it's great. There's nothing really, nothing to object to here. Yum. Delish. It's a real great wake me up, you know, real eye opener, a corpse reviver, if you will. So that's my Bloody Mary. Usually I don't do any Tabasco in it. Sometimes I do a little bit more Worcestershire. The amount of horseradish that winds up in there is not an exact science. In fact, you could always leave it out and stir it in to taste, right? Lots of options for you there. Uh, I think without further ado, we should get into our first Bloody Mary mix. Do you want to try this one, by the way? That's good. 
It's good. Generally, I go I go for the the heat on a Bloody Mary because I want to eat it, drink it slow, and I feel like I drink that very fast. You think that's not hot enough? I think that's pretty hot. Yeah, I, it's got enough. I just sometimes I go super hot with a okay. Bloody Mary. Hey guys, sorry I've got to interrupt the show just very briefly. I want to let you know that uh, Meredith and I have a podcast now. It's called Midnight Local. Uh, if you want more of us, if you want to hang out with us on the Midnight Local couch while we have midnight type late night rambling conversations about movies and pop culture and media and whatever else was on our mind at the moment, uh, it's probably something you're going to be into. Uh, you can check it out uh, at the link in the pin comment below or up here in the corner. We're on YouTube if you want to watch us at youtube.com slash midnight local. Obviously, there's going to be links. If you prefer your podcasts to be audio only, it's anywhere you get your podcasts. All right. Really sorry about this quick interruption. Back to the show. So let's pick one. I don't know which one to do. This one's Mr. and Mrs. T's. It comes in a can. Let's see how you make it. What do you say you're supposed to do? Add one can of Mr. and Mrs. T's Bloody Mary mix, an ounce of vodka, and ice to a glass. Stir it. Garnish it with a lime wedge. One ounce of vodka, so. Let me shook that a little bit. I don't want to rim this glass in salt, but I'll keep some salt by, and if we want to, we can kind of like put a little on the finger or something. Yeah. Let's see how this one came out. That is really salty. Wow. Whoa, man. What's the sodium content here? Uh, 710 milligrams compared to Campbell's, which is 470. So, I mean, that's a jump. This is salty. Wow. And they're telling you to put more salt to salt the rim. Hell no. The first thing I thought was, oh, celery salts, because I, I tasted celery salts, which I think is interesting. Like, is the salt just sitting on top? Did I like fail to mix it or something? That's crazy salty. I do get the celery salt for sure. No horseradish, no fire. Does it list the ingredients in the? Water, tomato concentrate, vinegar, cane sugar, sea salt, salt, smoke flavor, onion powder, spices, garlic and onion powder, acacia gum, pepper, guar gum, cellulose gum, bottleized yeast extract, powder, natural flavors, garlic sodium powder again, in the cinnate, disodium guanolate, red chili pepper. It's made by Mott's, by the way, you know, like Mott's apple oh, juice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Crafted with 95% juice and sea salt. My ass. I, I don't like this one. This one's bad. The only saving grace is that this can is only 40 calories. You want to try it? Uh, to I me, do, I do love salt. Yeah, that's, that's like beef fizz salty. Yeah, I mean, it's flat. That it's lifeless. Is, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, there's no, that's the horseradish that's missing. If you needed to improve this, put a little black pepper in, put a little horseradish and a couple dashes of Worcestershire. It's going to get better. I, I think that you may as well make it yourself though from scratch. Yowza. Uh, we've done my standard. We've done Mrs. and Mr. T's. Uh, up next, we're going to do another one of these. So right after this. All right, Meredith. Um, I want to go for uh, Zinzang. We'll just start this one. This one comes in a big plastic jug. It's an award-winning Bloody Mary mix. It's browner in color, which I think I'm going to read as a promising thing. I feel like I've heard good things about Zinzang, or people in the comments have said, you got to get that Zinzang. Some of these might be real regional. We ordered all this stuff on the internet, so I wouldn't know. I've never seen this around that I, maybe I haven't been looking for it, but um, maybe this is like, I, oh, for some reason, I get the vibe that this might be like a Southern thing. 20 calories a serving, nice. Four ounces Zinzang. One and a half vodka, pour over ice and stir, get a squeeze of lime. Everyone wants lime. Dead simple there. Four ounces of our Zing Zang. Zing! Zang! One and a half ounces of our vodka. This has a twist of lime, or a lime wedge rather, a squeeze from a lime wedge. Here we go. Wow, that is way better. Holy shit. Okay, so these can be good. It's not quite as uh, light and hot as mine, but I've had many a Bloody Mary like this and I've been never unhappy about it. It is real salty again, 780 milligrams. <laughs> and so we're right up there in crazy town. I mean, yeah, I'm gonna get a headache from doing this episode. But at least this one's got a little bit of bottom end to it. There's some other flavors happening in here. There's um, a lot of black pepper, for sure black pepper. And then there is, a celery salt. It's just a different blend. It's a different mix. The black pepper is helping it a lot. It's funny to me that horseradish isn't in these things. Maybe that's just like a Northeast thing or something. I don't know. But like to me, that is like a vital component. And people have said online that they think that's crazy talk. 
but I don't know. Like that's a thing. That's like the thing that makes it a Bloody Mary. We'll say this is at least better than the bad. Very salty. Yeah, 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 absolutely. No question. Super salty. It's funny that you think this is saltier than the other one, but this is, I think, the same level of salt. It's the same. It has a base to it, but I, I mean, they're both salty, but. If you had to drink one, you'd pick this. Yeah, uh-huh. All right, let's do another one. Let's just keep going. This is, <laughs> Mary was like, this going to be a quick one to shoot. She might be right. Revolution! Bloody Mary mix. Directions. Just add alcohol. <laughs> Does it really say that? I swear to God. It says a serving is three ounces, so we're going to do three ounces of this and one and a half of vodka. Here we go, a glass. Three ounces of this stuff. Ooh, it's thick. One and a half of that stuff. Stir. Salute. I'm not going to lie, they, it tastes really similar to the last one. I think this one actually does have a touch of horseradish in it. Very small amount. It gives you a little bit of heat on the tip of your tongue and on the back of your throat. Not bad. It has a very peppery, but like black pepper, like darker flavor. I don't know how else to explain that. I think I've got the mix about right, so it's hard to say. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can see horseradish in there. A lot of ingredients, man. Water, Worcestershire, tomato paste, vegetable juice concentrate, which is Juice, carrot, celery, beet, parsley. Oh, it's like um, V8. V8. It's like V8. Salt, ascorbic acid, natural flavor, citric acid, cayenne, horseradish. There we go. Distilled white vinegar, celery. Uh, it's okay. I like it about the same as the Zing Zang. I kind of have to say, I probably people are going to prefer this over mine for the most part. All right, let's uh, move it right along. McClure's is the one I probably have the highest hopes for because I feel like I've heard really good things about this. It definitely needs to be shook. Does it give you a ratio? More salt than the other ones, 916 milligrams. Damn. Good Lord. So we're gonna go equal parts again. There's zero information about how many, how much to pour or even how to pour it from a big tomato jar. Three ounces. There's a lot of like whole herbs in here. Like I'm thinking I'm looking at dill and stuff, which is, you know, generally speaking, a pretty good sign. Just so much salt though. I can't get over that, that 900 and something milligrams. One and a half ounces. Why don't I sample these without the vodka, you might be asking yourself. Well, because you kind of need to thin the flavor profile out to the degree that it should be in order for this to be a, a suitable test. Okay, here we go, McClure's. Well, it's definitely the freshest tasting one by far. Super high salt content. It reads less salty than the other ones. Isn't that something? Boy, what is that? Is that dill? Is that the dill? I think that's dill. It's the most interesting one yet. Horseradish for sure. A little bit of heat, a little bit of black pepper, a little bit. I don't really get the salt like I did the other ones. The other ones are oppressively salty. This one isn't, weirdly. The dill though actually does add a whole other dimension on this one. I like this one. Ingredients are very minimal. Distilled vinegar, watered vinegar, tomato paste, cucumber juice, salt, pepper, garlic, dill, black pepper. You know, so I guess not horseradish. That's good. A lot of people say like, you know, oh, I don't want to see like 10,000 ingredients on a thing. I don't mind that. I don't mind that at all. I'm genuinely enjoying this. It takes it into a sweet space a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I like the dill. I would go, it's good. Ah, is he coming around on yeah. it? Yeah. I, like, I want to go back for more. I like the dill. Oh man, this is fun. We're just blasting right through. Let's do Troma? Oh no, Toma. <laughs> the Toxic Avenger is coming to your town. Look out. Craft cocktail mixer made in New York. Toma, Bloody Mary. There you go. See, four parts mixer, one and a half parts spirit. Really weird to do the math that way, but it's fine. It does make my life kind of easy. Oh, they suggest it with vodka, tequila, Miss Calogen. We're gonna go vodka. 30, go. Oh, how much, how much, I wanna know how much sugar, how much salt rather. 440, much lower salt on this. Much lower. Yeah. A little ice. Four ounces. This is thick. This yeah. is tomato sauce. Wow. One and a half ounces of our vodka. Is a Bloody Mary your go-to for a brunch drink? Nope. What is it? Um, I'll usually get a mimosa. Okay. Here we go. Toma. It does have a note in there that it tastes like a vodka sauce for sure. It also tastes like barbecue. <laughs> this is a departure. This one is weird. 
I mean, that's smoky. Certainly not overly salty. It's hot. It's got some real pepper in there. I was really taken aback by that first sip because it was like, whoa, wait a minute. It doesn't taste really anything like the others. Yeah, smoky. There's a place near me that makes chicken wings and they actually barbecue them, you know, with their wood-fired barbecue. This reminds me of those wings where they're hot and spicy, but there's a lot of smoke in them. I don't know, I'm kind of into this. It's fun. It's kind of cool to get new ideas. It's like drinking pasta sauce. Oh, it is. It is like drinking pasta sauce, no question. I like that. The smokiness is nice. It's different. Yeah. It's, it's real different. Yeah. Stirrings. Simple Bloody Mary. A blend of tomato juice from concentrate and horse radish. Real juice. No preservatives. I just want to know the salt content. 550 on sodium, so not unreasonable. Do they give a spec? Bloody Mary. Three ounces of mix. One and a half vodka. Two to one. They do a rimmed glass. Have you ever seen a rimmed Bloody Mary glass? Maybe, yeah, but like on a ridiculous one with all of, with like sure. tons of stuff coming sure, out of it. Sure, sure, sure. And you're going to drink it with a straw anyway. You're never going to be on that rim. So this one, I will say, just looking at it in the bottle, it's thick, so. All right, two ounces of this. Oh my God. That, <laughs> that is so thick. It doesn't pour so much as stack. <laughs> two ounces of vodka. Give it a twist of lime. All right, here we go. This is Stirrings Bloody Mary. That's salsa. That is so bad. That is 100% I'm drinking salsa. It's a mix between salsa and pizza sauce. No, I'm not. <laughs> I can't stand this. I really want to know what you think because I was just like, that that's, that's crazy. That's crazy shit. Oh yeah, get out the chips. Yeah, it's, it's sweet. It's they made it very sweet. Salsa. <laughs> I'm glad we have some decisive moves here. Stirrings, bad. We have one left. Um, this is the last one. You oh, need you got to add, add tomato juice. Yeah. yeah. So what's in there if it doesn't have the tomato juice? These are tiny letters. Real tiny. Worcestershire. Then it describes Worcestershire. Jalapeno pepper puree, sugar, salt, spices, prepared horseradish, normal stuff. Celery, salt, that kind of shit. Oh, I need the ratio. This is a few dashes per batch, which not science, but okay. Let's get some ice in here. I know I'm happy enough to use dashes of Angostura in a drink, but with something like this, like a commercial product you're trying to test, a real recipe would help. Four ounces of tomato juice I'm gonna use. Do one and a half vodka. And like a goodly quantity of this because I want to really put a lot of this flavor into it and see how it is. I got like four dashes. It doesn't really dash. You kind of go, get a little squeeze. You smell it. That smells pretty good. Here we go. Plain from Dimitri. I actually kind of like that. I think a big part of why I like that is that the tomato juice is better. I've been missing, and I didn't realize it from all these other ones, is like tomato juice that was good. Somehow the Campbell's is much nicer than what's in other ones. This is actually really good. It's subtle, it's salty, and elevatedly salty. Like it's saltier than a lot of other stuff you're gonna drink and eat, but like a Bloody Mary should have a little salt to it. And otherwise, it's got a balance of heat and tang and acid and savory components. Like the celery salt is in there for sure. Probably there is the Worcestershire in there. Well, I saw it on the ingredients as well. It feels well balanced. I I'll tell you what, I think I like this one the best as a stock standard Bloody Mary. I think some of the other ones had more inventive ideas. I don't know, I kind of like this one quite a bit. What do you think? Yeah, that's good, the pepper. You get more pepper in that than other ones. Okay. Yeah, I didn't pick up on that, but I see what you mean. I still think I like the Toma the best, but. You like the Toma? That was the smoky smoky, right? Yeah, I like it. It's an and interesting it was, idea. It was more spicy as well. Yeah. I'm gonna throw like, a bunch more of this in there. All right, here we go. It's funny, I like it more, better when it was a little more subtle. Um, it's a lot saltier now. Now it's probably too salty, but I still don't think it's bad. It doesn't feel like heavy or, or anything like that. It does, it's a lot saltier though. All right, let's do the last one, which is gonna be their second flavor. All right, here we go, our tomato juice, four ounces. Two and a half. And one, okay, something like 10. I don't know, whatever it is. 
Be. Okay, here we go. This is the Chipotle version. Let's see if this is any different. I don't like it as much. Oh, it tastes like a horse barn. It's a lot spicier. It has like a rising kind of spice, that capsaicin spice. Give her a shot. Yeah, I like that. You like that? See, that's funny. I don't think it's, it's just not mine. Ooh, that is the spiciest one. Yeah. Oh yeah, there it comes. What have we learned here? <laughs> I should do the, I still think the tongue was my favorite because it had a good balance of spice and other stuff. I yeah. now, this one is all spice right now. The lighter load of the, the Dimitri's like regular before I doubled it up, that was probably my favorite. Hopefully, like there's information in the way I describe them. Hopefully that's of use to people uh, or that you're just gonna make your own. I don't know, I don't have anything else to really say on this subject about Bloody Marys. I do have some new ideas about my own Bloody Mary. Maybe I'll revisit that, I'll rethink my recipe. to see where I can take that in the future. Meredith and I have a podcast. Did you know that? We do, it's called Midnight Local. We go way, way, way off topic over there talking about movies, mostly. If you wanna hang out with us, shoot the shit, sit on the stinky old couch over at Midnight Local and eat some Funyuns all night long, mostly for about an hour per episode, and talk movies. You can get it at bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash Midnight Local or youtube.com slash midnight local or or wherever you get your podcasts and i do hope you will let me get up into your ear holes and fill you with some words thank you guys so much for watching we will see you next time on another episode of htd meantime here are four other things some of them are episodes of how to drink some of them are links to channels one of them is almost certainly our podcast midnight local so i hope you will check that out but we'll see you guys next time on how to drink good night good luck and goodbye